Hello, everyone, and welcome to Social Chats. But more than anything, we want to wish you a very happy Valentine's. And because it's Valentine's, Catherine, what are you and I up to today? We are talking about love and how to love your customers and love your potential clients and your existing clients. And by doing all that and by showing love and respect, you will actually gain more followers and have more clients and make more money. So it's all about kind of selling without selling and how um, kind of love and being genuine can take you really far in marketing these days. Yes, and, and here's really why we think this is so important. And often when we're teaching our boot camps, we go over this in a little bit of detail. And that is that you and I are using Instagram or Facebook as a social network. We're following our friends, our family, and we're really seeing what everyone is up to. And it's not always a really happy road. I mean, sometimes we learn that a very good friend of ours might be going through cancer treatments, or we find out that another good friend of ours' parents have passed away. And, and then we see a newborn child just being born, and we, we're watching all of this in our news feeds. And it's such an emotional roller coaster because as human beings, we're all about emotion. Right, Catherine? Yes. And I um, I don't know if you want to go about, about how our interview is going to go, but um, I kind of went through uh, a list of things that you, the do's and don'ts in, in social media and social media marketing to be able to show love to your customers and how kind of marketing has evolved. So I don't know if you want me to start with this or, and then um, maybe yeah, I can so talk. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. So what Catherine and I have done for today's show in preparation, besides just always living and breathing social media, is we went out and we talked to and we read and we really put a lot of work into finding out what is working today as far as social media goes, because a lot of us are really missing the key point about social networks. So Catherine, you go ahead and start. You and I both have lists of things that we can share with yeah. everyone. So we are constantly listening to podcasts and reading and all that. It's like a full-time job just to keep on top of things. But I think, and I think a lot of you will agree from your personal experience that there's this kind of marketing revolution that's happening these days. And back in, um, back in the days, if, to be informed, you had to wait for people to do press releases. Companies had to do press releases or put an ad in the paper or put some information um, in magazines so that you'd get informed about their products. Well, with the whole online world and especially with social media, all of a sudden, people are putting a lot more value into reviews and into what other people had to say, into word, word of mouth, into influencers. So you right away have access to a lot of information that other people are saying, not what the company is telling you. So as a, as a company, you can say our product is the best, but we look at the reviews and we're like, you know what, it's got a one-star review, I'm not going to buy this. So all of a sudden, mm -hmm. as, as a business owner, you lose kind of the control on your marketing and how, how is that going to work? So there's ways that uh, apparently actually two thirds of customers now, and that, that works whether you're in real estate or you have a business or selling goods, two thirds of customers are going to base um, their purchase or, or hiring you for their service based on, on reviews and word of mouth. So how do you tackle that? Do you have an idea how to tackle that? <laughs> have yeah, idea. you you need to start to deepen your connections with yes. what is your followers, your community, your tribe, because people are buying products different today. It's always been no trust and, of course, value. Yeah, and I think... We are, as customers, and it's funny when you're in the marketing world, but as customers, we don't want to be spam anymore. People have no more patience for spamming. And 
you have the power because you can turn those ads off. If you're on Instagram and you don't want to see an ad, you click I'd had. You can do it on, mo on your desktop as well. If you see a Google ad, you can close the ads. You can decide to have um, entire kind of software that allow you to have a no ad platform. And so how do you do to put your, pla your service out there? Yeah, Catherine, that's a really good point. Um, just to elaborate a little bit about what Catherine just said. When you hide someone's content, that is known as a negative feedback in the algorithms. And the more negativity that you create by creating content that the consumer is not enjoying and they're hiding, that is going to push you further and further down, which means that your content is slowly not going to be seen or it's going to cost you a lot more money because you're not watching and listening to what your community is saying to you. Yeah, and it's hard to get back from a negative to get back up. You have to work, you can, but you have to work double hard. So what you want to do is to be positioning yourself in a way that you don't get a negative or you your ads don't get hidden. So how mm -hmm. do you do this? I have a little list. Can I go through my do's and don'ts? Yes, you go <laughs> ahead, Catherine, and I'll, I'll check them off my list. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> Oops, you see, I have my cross country outfit hidden under. <laughs> okay. So, so um, all right. So, don't. We're going to, this seems all negative, but we're going to the love afterwards. So, don't. So, do not auto post. Every time we teach our boot camp, we have um, students that use auto posting services. What's auto posting, Heather? I know you're. <laughs> Auto you have a pet peeve with the auto posting. So how about you tell us a bit about the whole auto posting shenanigan going on? Yeah. Okay. And and fair enough. Sometimes as business people, we feel like we're just too busy to do our own social media. So there's a lot of social media companies out there that will take over your social media and they will do something called auto posting for you where they take links from stories or blogs and they put them directly onto your business page. They can even feed it into Instagram in a lot of cases. But what these are is these are stories that you don't own. They're not on your website. And so basically what you're doing is you're paying another company to drive traffic away from your products and your services. So to me, that's a big no-no. It is a big no-no. So auto posting, basically you pay and you pay quite a bit of money. I think like in real estate, the services are about $600 a month. And so a company just all the post it. So I've put, um, do not use auto posting. And then my next one is don't just get it, get it done, get it over with. So we are busy. <laughs> it's called we know set we have it to and post. forget it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or set it and forget it or just say, Oh, I know I should be posting three times a week to keep a presence and be consistent. So I'll just throw something out there. I'll just put a photo on Instagram. I'll just throw it out there. It's mm -hmm. not worth it. You're better to post quality over quantity. And I know we, it's like, oh, I should be posting one today. Well, says who, if you only have the time and the, the capacity to post three times a week or even just once a week, post once a week quality content, be consistent, like post on a regular basis. So you keep your, your social media platforms alive. You keep a heartbeat, but post quality. Do not post to sell. So this is really hard and we do it all the time. If you're in real estate, just listed, just sold. I, I do it. It's so hard to break from that and to be able to tell a story as opposed to try selling. So an example of that would be instead of be putting a huge sold kind of sticker on a photo and say, big sold, call me for a free home evaluation. We do it all the time, it does still work, but a better way to go about it would be, if you can take a photo of the new homeowners and say, I am so happy to have been able to help so-and-so find their dream home. They just moved in from wherever into town and they were looking for the, a special single family home for their new kids coming up. Put the story, tell us what's behind that sold sign. And you know the story, we don't, but people, it's like saying uh, the same for um, anything, for a wedding to say, this is the bride. Or if you say, 
this look at this beautiful photo of the grandma with a tear in her eyes she was there and she wore the same dress at the wedding like tell us the story behind just that big selling so try to sell without selling and we have a whole presentation on yeah. that well um it, what it is catherine is it's not what people are trying to say today and you've you've touched a base on it they're in such a hurry that they're just putting it on and running away and they're done but in actuality if you had taken that same content those same photos and you found a new way to share it with your community like before you post it look at it read it and say to yourself i'm sending this to the people that value following our business how can i make sure that they're going to enjoy this read it and be become part of the conversation instead of just one way selling. Yeah, uh, totally. And and we're gonna give you trick because then you're like, oh great, how am I gonna do this? So I have trick, there's a lot to do's and I really thought about this this morning. For, so let's um, say a quick the, shout out to Skydive Vancouver Island because they were at oh, our boot sweet. camp in Qualicum. Yeah, they did, I remember nice you guys, you hi. Here. <laughs> yeah, um, excellent. If you're following us, tell us where, where you're located in the comments so we can say hi. Um, okay, and the two don't, my two last don'ts is don't focus just on the return in your investment. So don't just think, I've spent this much money, this is how many sales I've gotten because this is not the end goal of social media. Social media is gonna help you stand out and it's really hard to put a price. Have it. Um, it's it's really hard to put a price on on connection, on relationship, on brand awareness, and people being able to relate. So try to stay out of the the pure numbers, like how much sales did I get exactly from this, and focus on smart goals and we go i'm gonna kind of go quick on this because we talk about it in your boot camp but we have a whole module on this but smart goals could be um making an effort to be part of your community this month and showcasing some events in your community it could be um trying to post interesting content or ask for testimonials or ask people when they what they would like to learn about so try to kind of stay out of just the number and the dollar figure so that was my don't um and then i can step in with the do's or maybe i'll let you talk about some yeah, of your points well, and then go with the do's the do's and the don'ts are are all really important components of curating your content but one of the yeah. things that we have to remember as human beings today we all want to feel love we want to mm -hmm. feel like we're respected that we belong so as part of the community when you're creating content or sharing what's going on within your business it doesn't matter if it's real estate or what it is um, or skydiving such as uh, our uh, friends that are with us right now what you're doing is you're sharing emotion and helping people belong and be part and maybe encouraging that they want to participate because everyone else is having so much fun or enjoying what it is that you're doing. So you want to keep in mind as human beings, we are driven by emotion. So when you're creating your content and Catherine's going to talk to you about the do's now of social media, we don't like yes. to be sold to. We all love to buy. We're consumers at the biggest yeah. today. We're buying online, <laughs> but we don't like to be sold to. So how can you change the way that you're communicating in your content when you're posting to be more inclusive with your products and services? Catherine? Yes. So I think the first part is know your customers. Who, who are your customers? Who are you trying to reach? And once again, we go in length in this in the social media bootcamp that we are doing in Victoria on February 25th and in Whistler in March. <laughs> That's a little plug. Um, so know your customers and pay attention to the why. So not why are you in business? Why would your customers want to do business with you? What it is that they want? If they say, oh, I had a great experience or they leave you a, a review, for example, you can say, well, what it is that you enjoy about doing business with me and try to find out more of what they need, what they want and put yourself in their shoes and try to be there 
to help. So how does that translate? Well, you can have frequently asked questions. So if you think about content, think about what people ask you over and over. If you bump into people and they say, you know, I'm not sure about the market these days, or it seems like the interest rate is gonna change, or I don't know if people really like this product. Well, ask them, take note of those frequently asked questions and make a list and make content to answer those questions to be of help. And ask, ask what they like about you, ask for reviews, because then every review, a Google review, a Facebook review, and um, Heather, you're good with uh, keeping up to date with the Google, the Facebook reviews, but all these notification and these reviews, they put you on top of, uh, they will help you have more leads is what I'm trying to say, right? Um, and then and on that note, you can, yeah. when you're talking about reviews and recommendations, Catherine, it's so easy today for you to copy the link in your settings and send it out to your client base and ask them, you know, if you've had a good experience with us, we would love you to share it on our social media. And if you didn't have a good experience, it's not all one way. You don't know 100%. If they haven't already told you they love you to death, if you haven't had a good experience with us, we'd love to talk to you about what happened. So both ways. Yes. And I think a lot of people are afraid of negative review on social media. But if you're if you're genuine and smart and confident about your service, there's always a way to spin that bad review into paying attention and listening and supporting um, supporting them the person right and then bring it in a way to your advantage by by being there to help so once you know what people want to know about what they need what you can do to help them then you want to create content to help them so what kind of content can you create well you can create a blog with say 10 points and talk once a week about two of those points and then send them to your website to read the rest you can do some videos you can ask for video testimonials but you can also do videos and you can go live where people, like we're doing today, where people can step in and be part and see truly who you who you are. You want to make sure that you stay genuine and you want to make sure that you differentiate yourself. Now, how do you go about this? Well, ask someone. See, if you have to say five things that, that describe me, what would it be? And you'd be surprised at what people would say. They'd probably say, like in my case, uh, she's a mom of three, she lives in Worcester, she loves skiing, and she's a social media marketer. And all these things are things that differentiate me. So I can start kind of not only helping people, but showing a face of me that is not just selling, that it's me as, as a whole, as part as my business and as part as who I am. And I love the saying of people might not be willing to buy or sell right now, but they can start relating with you. And when the time will be to make that move or to make a purchase or hire an agent, you'll be kept top of mind. So there's a little trick to doing this. So it's easy enough for Catherine and I to give you all these ideas and all these tips and things <laughs> to do and not do. But quite honestly, Catherine carries around this little book. And when we're teaching our boot camps and people are asking questions and yes. things that we might be able to make a video out of, we can answer yes. on our social media, she's always jotting down these little things. And then she has another little book. And I have the same book. And these are our persona books. And this is who is our number one client. And we're taking notes about these people and the things that they're saying all the time. So when we sit down to meet and brainstorm, we can review the things that our customers are asking and our customers are saying so we can keep moving and building on who our brand and who our business is. Yeah, absolutely. And and then and, and that will help you being able. Oh, can you talk about like being like an expert in your field? I, lo I like how you you kind of explained all that. Well, when you create any type of content, um, what you're doing is you're writing. And when you start to write things, you become an author. And what an author is, is an authority on the subject for which you're speaking of. And the more that you can keep giving valuable content that people are enjoying consuming as consumers, then the more that they look 
to you as the person in the know in that industry. So it's all about building on your reputation for whatever your business is. And it's whether it's through photography, whether it's through blogging, or of course, video. And the simplest way to do video is to continuously update people on your products and your services. Yeah, and give them content. And video is key. I remember when I first um, teamed up with Heather, she was like, video, video. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like who's even watching this? First, I sound awful and no one's gonna watch it. Every single day now, I bump into your people. I was at an event with the women of Worcester last night and three people told me, and I didn't really know them that well, they said, oh, hi, you're doing social media. I watch your videos and I follow you. And I was like, really? I had I had no idea and I get we get stuff videos work people pay attention and then you're always kept up of mind I guess my last two things I have on my list is go out there so go in your community make an effort and I know it's hard it's like cold season and we're cozy <laughs> at home and then you know it's nice to be in front of the fireplace with a glass of wine but you know what once in a while, making make it a point to either go out to a community event and talk about it if you can on social media or take the extra step and take a couple photos while you're at the event and go out there and support your community. And also, if you can, maybe create community events so that so that you're you kind of put um, a heart and love behind your business and behind who you are. And Margaret, our dear friend, <laughs> Margaret <laughs> with Dexter Realty is amazing at that. What are the events that she does? There's the strawberry. Oh, she does her else. strawberry. Yeah. She does her uh, Christmas one where she invited everyone to a theater. Uh, she delivers uh, little gifts. She oh, and makes the cookies at her open houses. Yeah. And she does like a uh, lot of uh, like volunteering and, and Margaret mm -hmm. does it from her heart and people love Key. it and people go, and it's not, she's not trying to like be there to like give her business card to people. She does it because she cares. And this is what people are looking for. And if you think if sometimes it's fun, I found to look at bigger brands, like what are the big guys with tons of money doing, right? What are the brands like, Coca-Cola and like, what are those guys doing? Not that it, it that we have the same budget, but it's nice to learn from the pros. So mm -hmm. um, if you look at some companies, look at the companies that people put a sticker on their laptop, right? You have to be, or on their coffee mug, you have to be a really <laughs> good company for someone to want to put a sticker on their stuff and walk around with it. So companies like, Patagonia, like Yeti. Yeti is a cooler brand. Why would ever someone put a sticker of a cooler on their laptop? Well, it's because they've created a community behind their brand where people can relate. They're outdoorsy people. They do, uh, they're out there for the environment. They put a lot, their magazine, their um, Patagonia magazine, it's actually like an environmental magazine with a bunch of information. And then some of their products, they recycle products. Like people are looking behind just the sell, sell, sell and say, okay, what's the story behind it? And I want value. I have all this money to spend. I want to spend it. But if I can choose in between a person that cares or a company that cares or someone that just trying to sell me whatever it is, mm -hmm. I might even pay a premium to uh, to pay for the company that cares or the person because you have a, a lot of competition there's a lot of competition yeah. out there and what Catherine is talking about is what can you do to be a little bit different in order for people to recognize you respect you and want to do business with you so Catherine we're at the top of the hour I'm just gonna say a couple of things um, that I would really like people to think about when they're creating content uh, the number one thing that everyone is looking for is honesty. You have yes. to be honest about your products, your service, and who you are. And with the honesty, I really want to attach passion. So you mentioned Margaret, Michelle, um, David. We have so many people within our sphere of influence here at Keep It Simple Social Media that are passionate about what they're doing. Catherine and I, we are passionately in love with what we're doing. So your honesty and your passion, I think they go hand in hand when you're creating your content. Um, 
Of course, there's always the be um, available. That means getting back to people, dealing with your notifications, acknowledging that people are on your social media. Those yes. things are really important for building community. Say thank you. You know, Catherine and I are about to say thank you to Ray and Kenna, who we absolutely adore. I was gonna adore. say, when you said her <laughs> influence, I was like, Ray, Ray is passionate too. He's one of the really passionate and ones. Yeah, and Tony uh, with Joe Little Oak Realty Remax. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah. So we're gonna give a big thank you. Our thank you is not necessarily gonna be 100% on social media through Instagram or Facebook. We're actually going to go out and get him a gift, wrap it up, and we're going to take it to him to say thank you for his referrals. So there's other ways to also build within your community and your sphere of influence. And outside of um, our thank you, there's customer service. Your customer service, no matter what your products and services are, if you don't have impeccable customer service and on the ball, you will drop the ball and people will move on and they might even give you a negative review or a bad recommendation. And so today we really have to be firing on all cylinders as a business person, covering all these areas of honesty, passion, customer service, saying thank you, being available. And remember, this is social media. It's about emotion. We must, as it is Valentine's today, Bring on the love and your community, your tribe, your followers, they will feel it and they will want to be part of whatever you're doing because it's exciting. And basically, love lets off endorphins into the air and people <laughs> all want a little bit of it. <laughs> Catherine, do you have anything last minute to say in regards to our show today? The Valentine's well, love of social media? like a big 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 shout out for our families to support us and for all of our students that are there for us and watch us and subscribe to our channels and follow us we love what we do and it would we wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for all of your support so tons of love to our community Exactly. Hey, Skydive Vancouver Island, you want to know how we're putting all these banners up on our live video? Well, we're using Be Live TV. It is a third party live streaming um, device that you can purchase and use. You can also use it for free. There's lots of fun things that come with it. So there's a quick answer to you. We sure appreciate you being here today. Catherine and I will take this love of Valentine's and we will turn it into a blog. We will upload it to our YouTube channel. We will embed it into our blog. It will now live on our website. And we have taken this content and made it into many different forms of uh, content for our social media. Once again, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. And remember, keep it keep simple. Keep it simple. <laughs>